Hi, I'm Jessica. No, I'm Jessica. Oh, right. I'm Chris. And we're here to talk to you about commas, commas and, and apostrophes. Hey, you think you're better than me? You look so small from up here. First, let's talk about commas. Commas are generally used in three circumstances. First, they're used before coordinating conjunctions like for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so, which are also called fanboys, in compound sentences. I didn't get any sleep last night, comma, but I still have to go to work. These are ideas that contrast with each other. The chicken was a few weeks old, comma, so Laura didn't eat it. You did the right thing, Laura, and these are ideas that show cause and effect. Commas are annoying, comma, and they look funny. These ideas are being added to one another. Notice that in each of these examples, both sides of the sentence could be complete on their own. The second reason commas are often used is after introductory words or phrases, oftentimes transitions or dependent clauses. After Monday's class, comma, Jerome forgot everything he had learned about carbon bonds and water molecules. This transition shows time. Obviously, comma, skydiving without a parachute is a bad idea. This is a transition that shows logic or context. Because Ms. Strawbon is teaching this class online, comma, she sometimes works in her pajamas. This is a dependent clause showing cause and effect. Note that everything after the comma in these examples could be a complete sentence on its own. This is how you can check to see if you need a comma. The third and final general reason that people use commas is to include non-restrictive clauses or information. Now remember, you don't have to memorize all these grammatical terms, but you should start being able to notice the patterns and apply it to your own writing. Michael B. Jordan, for obvious reasons, always takes off his shirt in movies. Okay, Jessica, this is a non-restrictive clause. My online class, English 101, is obviously my favorite class. This is an A positive that further defines the noun class. The only way to clean my office is to actually clean my office, unfortunately. This non-restrictive clause is at the end of a sentence instead of the middle, so we're only using one comma. Note that the information in blue in each of these examples could be left out. It's all extra and that's why it needs to be contained with commas. Now let's talk about apostrophes. Apostrophes are generally used in two circumstances. First, they're used to combine two words into one contraction. I'm sorry, I can't come to your party next week. I hope it's really fun. Here, I'm is a contraction that combines I and am, can't combines can and not, and it's combines it and is. There's nothing wrong with using contractions, but make sure you remember what words they combine. For example, there's students everywhere. In this example, the contraction there stands for there plus is, and there is students everywhere doesn't work. It should be there are students everywhere, and unfortunately, there isn't a contraction for there plus are. So you would need to say there are students everywhere. And here's one that's rare, but it is real. Udentive, which is a contraction of you, should, not, and have. Chris, you didn't have included that one. <clears throat> Apostrophes are also used to show possession. The panther's claws were still glistening with blood. Here, the panther possesses the claws, or the claws of the panther. Aaron Hernandez's father was a poor role model. Aaron Hernandez possesses the word father, or the father of Aaron Hernandez. What do you think about Kim Kardashian's dream of becoming a lawyer? Here, Kim Kardashian possesses the dream, or the dream of Kim Kardashian. Some notes. If the word that possesses another word is already plural and ends with an S, then you add the apostrophe after the S. For example, the students' test, the cars' engines, the Americans' right to vote. If the plural form of the word doesn't end with an S, you add it after the apostrophe. For example, the people's health, the data's conclusions, the women's U.S. soccer team. Some words are already possessive. They don't need apostrophes at all. Those are words like his, hers, it's, their, your, my. Now that you know a little bit more about commas and apostrophes, make sure that you proofread your own work properly and carefully to make sure that you're using them correctly. We'll see you soon. Bye! Bye.